Yo, by tour here. What's up everyone? I hope you're doing amazing. I want to give the community a huge shout out. Thank you so much for the support and the kind words of encouragement. The Hardware Ninja community is truly the best. Please stay tuned until the end of the video for a special announcement. We got a lot of requests for a digital design interview video. You may have already seen this question that we posted as a bonus on our different social media channels. Initially, we didn't think of making a video about it as it was intended to be a bonus question. However, due to the popular demand, we decided to make it into a video. Now, since the video is centered around digital, we will be focusing our discussion on that. I would like to point out that the beauty of open-ended questions like these are to showcase the experience and exposure that the interviewee has had. If you come from an analog background, you might have a certain answer. If you come from a physical design background, you might have a completely different answer. And if you come from a digital background, your answer might be even different. This is why open-ended questions work. There is no right or wrong answers. The moment you give the interviewer the answer they were expecting, do not expect for them to say, oh, okay, you got it, let's move on. A good interviewer will simply pivot and make new assumptions to probe how deep your knowledge actually is. In our videos, especially for digital interviews, you will hardly see questions like, what is an inverter? What is set up in hold time? Or even, what's the difference between a latch and a flip-flop? It is likely that some interviewers will ask you these questions, and you should know the answer to them. However, if you can answer open-ended questions in the way we present them, it is a guarantee that you already know these concepts. This is why our team focuses so much on you knowing the basics and applying them. We're not specializing in teaching you the basics. That is not our goal. We assume you already know them and know them well. We instead bring you challenging questions from interview sites where you can apply those basics to solve challenging questions. With that being said, let's look at the question. The interviewer, as we mentioned in our social media posts, will say something along the lines of, imagine I have the following system. We want to sample the button when it's pressed to execute a given FSM. Let's talk about the system and your observations about it. When tackling problems where large systems are involved, it is better to decompose them into their parts. So you can start your answer like this. Well, let me focus on the left-hand side of the circuit first. I see it is a PMOS device and its drain is tied to a resistor. Now, I see a button here, but let me ask you, when I press the button, does the gate go to supply or to ground? Let me pause here for a second and highlight the importance of asking questions during your interview. Part of your interview is for the interviewer to realize how you utilize your resources, whatever they may be. In this case, himself. You were given a system where you don't know what the button actually does. If something is not clear during your interview, it is okay to ask clarifying questions. Your whole answer could be flawed just by assuming the button does something when it could be doing the complete opposite. Let's carry on. Let's assume the interviewer say that when the button is pressed, the gate voltage is low. You can tell the interviewer that, since we haven't touched the button yet, the resistor will pull the node D to ground, and when we press the button, D will be at supply. That means we are trying to sample between high and low. This is where the flip-flop comes into play. Let's move on to the center of the circuit, or the flip-flop. We immediately notice that the reset is tied to ground. Another clarifying question you may ask the interviewer could be, I noticed that the reset of the flip-flop is tied to ground. Can I assume my flip-flop was reset properly and is starting at a known state? Let me pause again and show you the power of asking questions during your interview again. This is showing the interviewer you are able to see the whole system and how things interact with each other as opposed to seeing the individual pieces alone. This gives you major points. Let's say the interviewer said, yes, let's assume we started at a known state with proper resets. So carrying on with our answer, we have the FSM that we don't know what it does, but we truly don't need to know anyway. At this moment, we have to ask ourselves, what could go wrong with the system? We notice that the button can be pressed at any time independent of the clock. That means we have an asynchronous system, whereas the sampling mechanism is a synchronous system driven by the clock. 
At this moment, you can tell the interviewer the following. Because we can press the button at any given time, it is likely that we will at some point violate the setup and hold time conditions of the flop. This will lead to metastability issues that the FSM might not be able to resolve. The interviewer at this point might ask you, well, what if I make my setup and hold time as low as I can? Let's say five picoseconds total, will I still have a problem? This is a bit of a trick question because the pressing of the button is random in nature. Therefore, your answer should be, because this event is random, it does not depend on the setup and hold time. It is best to assume that we will at some point violate the setup and hold time conditions instead and build a proper circuit that can handle this. You might be tempted to think that if D takes a long, long time to change states, let's say one millisecond, then you might be okay. Well, you would be mistaken. Let's assume D in fact changes states in one millisecond. However, what happens when you are sampling D while it's crossing exactly the threshold of VDD divided by two? You would be at this point at an unknown state, neither high nor low. Expect the interviewer to have follow-up questions like, what can I add to my system to solve my problems? And there you have it. See how by asking open-ended questions, the interviewer was able to probe your understanding of several concepts without asking about them directly. That is why it's key for you to dominate the basics of your field, whether that is digital, analog, PCB design, or whatever it may be. And now onto the special announcement. We recently blew past a minor milestone the team had set for itself, 500 subscribers. Thank you so much. Our major goal, however, is to surpass 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. During our previous video, we mentioned the team was working on something special for the community to celebrate this milestone. And we have settled on something we hope you guys are really gonna enjoy. For our 1,000 subscriber special, we have decided to tap on our network and raffle three 45-minute sessions of mock interviews with engineers from different companies. These sessions can also serve as an opportunity for you to network and show the people interviewing you that you are ready for a job. Who knows, they may even recommend you for a position if you're that good. Since we offer content for different fields of hardware engineering, from silicon design, whether that be digital or analog, to PCB design, we will have to wait until the three lucky winners are selected to pair them with an interviewer from their field. Entry to the raffle will be completely free, so let's crush this milestone together. Smash that like and subscribe button if you're as excited as we are for this milestone. See you next time.